In this brief video, I just wanted to do a little bit of a discussion in the event that we do not get to it in class regarding Unity and the Realm of XR. Now, to begin, for those of you who are new to the idea of all of the different acronyms, uh, there are several. First off, when I say XR, that's actually a term for extended reality. This is our overall term. Like instead of us constantly having to say VR, AR, and MR, normally what will happen is if you are talking about all the different areas of reality, we'll often switch to XR as our acronym of choice here. So oftentimes it's a meaning for people who are working with or users that work with a culmination of virtual, augmented, and mixed reality. This doesn't have to be in the same exact software or program or using the same exact piece of hardware. This can just be somebody who works in all the different areas. However, backtracking a little bit, probably the one folks might be most familiar with is virtual reality or VR. This is where you have the simulated experience, you cannot actually see the world around you, and you're interacting in a completely different environment. You can even go so far as a lot of VR headsets now have means that they will actually have headsets included that not only are you in this completely different environment where you do not have access to the real world, but also you are hearing sounds and audio effects for this specific environment. On the other hand, you have the augmented reality or the AR. AR is more along the lines of interacting and overlaying to the real world. If you've ever heard of the games such as Pokemon Go or IKEA apps, whereby you can actually preview what something may look like in your home, these are some great examples of augmented reality. So this is something that uh, combines both real world around you, but also virtual elements that you can place in the world. On top of that too, this normally happens in real time. In comparison to its counterpart, VR, VR can kind of happen at different times. You can pause, you can save, etc. Augmented reality is more along the lines of it's happening right within the moment as far as real world time. Finally, you have the mixed reality or MR, which is a blend of both the physical and the digital world. So you have both computer graphics, uh, input systems, and oftentimes this is stored up on a cloud, whereby yes, you may have virtual elements as far as the environment is concerned. However, you may also have the augmented side of things whereby yes, you may turn around and have to work, let's say in an augmented reality, uh, to do training on a dummy for nursing. But then prior to that, you had a virtual reality experience of watching and seeing and practicing how to conduct some sort of test or surgery element. So as far as AR development for Unity, both AR and VR, they do have different aspects to them. And also too, probably the biggest thing that people need to consider is the hardware when you are developing. It's one thing to be able to practice development as far as the different uh, AR and VR aspects are concerned. However, if you don't really have something to test on, it can be hard to kind of see how the testing is going. So starting out with augmented reality, one thing I will say is having watched these areas, AR is probably from a business standpoint, the stronger of the two areas. Uh, also a fun fact, in comparison to Unreal Game Engine, this was actually where Unity focused on first. I think what Unity was trying to do was it was trying to actually go through and compete with Unreal and be the AR game engine versus the VR. So, uh, the biggest thing with augmented reality, though, you have to be careful of is what are you actually developing for? Are you developing for a headset? Are you developing for a handheld device? These are all questions that you need to answer. And also, these are all hardware pieces that are going to change how you actually develop. So, for example, Android or iOS, 
Android is great if you're working on PC. It makes it very easy as far as working with an Android device. However, the drawback is, is you know, Android may not be as popular as iOS devices such as iPhones. You can also do the same for iPhones, but the drawback to the iPhone is uh, Mac keeps it locked down that you will need a Mac to be able to test as far as your uh, piece of software is concerned. Again, lastly, but by no means least, you do have the headsets as well. Some of the headsets, probably the two big players, are the Magic Leap headset, uh, and also probably the biggest out of the two of them is the Microsoft HoloLens that really has kind of made its statement and kind of put its stake in the ground as far as businesses are concerned. Now, again, though, you're looking at a ton of money as far as if you actually want to buy a headset. On top of that too, you're not just buying the headset, you're also having to buy the dev kit to actually work with the headset as well. So this, you know, again, if you've watched any of my videos or you've been in any of my classes, that's one thing and why I hammer on being able to navigate documentation. A lot of this hardware, it's not so much that Unity includes it in its documentation. It's pretty much links of here's uh, Magic Leap or here is the HoloLens documentation, go have fun. So this is one of the reasons that a lot of folks will pick a specific item and stick to it. It's not a matter of I'm going to develop both for uh, iOS and Android and Magic Leap and HoloLens. If I'm looking at Magic Leap between HoloLens, maybe I might stick to the HoloLens because of its uh, ingrained in business design and development. I also include here just a list of uh, references to get folks started. So let's flip to the other side as far as virtual reality is concerned. Uh, virtual reality, in my opinion, compared to AR, uh, is actually probably the easier of the two to actually develop for. One of the nice things is, yes, it's an enclosed environment. You're building the entire environment. You are uh, putting the user in that environment, and you don't have to worry about as far as development goes and worrying about different types of real world environments the user might be using your software in. Like uh, its counterpart AR, the hardware is expensive, and, but however, probably a big con to VR is you're gonna need to have some space. We do have some options as far as sitting, but if you want to get the user up and moving around, uh, you want to be careful as far as the space that you are working in as far as testing. Just like its counterpart, depending on which route you go as far as headsets go, can change as far as the overall development goes. Now, before I go any further though, for those of you that are new to the concept of, I wanna make VR, there is something called VR sickness. Uh, this is something, this is a real thing. This can happen to people who have never done VR before. I've actually had students that the first time they stepped into VR, they actually did get sick. Uh, whenever I see people demoing at different conferences as far as VR is concerned, I've seen people get dizzy, uh, nauseous, and even, you know, go so far as collapsing. On top of that, too, even though they might still be able to hear around them, a lot of the new VR headsets will actually block out noise, which can actually be very disturbing to some users where they completely lose any sense of anything that is occurring around them, especially if you have to reach out and touch them. This can really startle somebody. So this is just a side note that if you do get into VR and you do decide to try to sell your games or you want to share your VR experience, be aware of it. One thing I'd advise and one thing that one of the companies in Pittsburgh did really well with Shell Games uh, is their I Expect You to Die game, where you can actually play it seated which is a great starting point, in my opinion, as far as, you know, giving somebody that grounding experience versus standing. So what are some of the headsets? Uh, really, you have two big players as far as VR goes. You have the HTC Vive and you have the Oculus Quest. So again, they both have their pros and cons, but price-wise, you're probably only picking one. Personally, I use the Vive. I like developing for it better. Uh, Oculus Quest, uh, I've heard good things about the development process. I just haven't had a chance to pick it up. Again, I have some development kits to get folks started. 
But one of the big things to take into consideration when you do start thinking about VR development, and this kind of ties into AR as well, one of the big things with VR that we have been trying to do is become unwired. The fact that you can do VR anywhere. And that was one of the things with augmented reality that really set it apart was you didn't need to be tethered to something. So things like the Oculus Quest 2 are great for that, that you can just you know show VR anywhere. However, uh, development and testing can take more time as far as having to get it over to the headset and uh, do testing. Wired, on the other hand, uh, such as the HTC Vive, like the version that I use, yes, I am tethered to my computer. However, one of the draw draws to that is I can test on the fly. I don't have to worry about publishing and then exporting to the headset or anything like that. So this is probably going to evolve as we continue to work with VR and AR. So those are just kind of a brief overview I wanted to provide folks on the differences between VR and AR, specifically to Unity. A lot of these also do tie into Unreal. However, again, this is more focused on Unity.